I want to talk to you today about the realm of the Spirit. Never forget what you are about to hear. Never forget what you are about to hear. This is one of those messages that should be heard over and over and over again. When God created man in the book of Genesis, God created man from the dust of the earth. But the greater components of man were from the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit is the realm of the immortals. The realm of the spirit is the realm where God eternally lives, functions, and dictates upon the physical. From the realm of the spirit, man received three things, the image of God, the likeness of God, and the breath of God. Not only did he receive that, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, the Bible clearly tells us man's functionality is from the realm of the spirit. God spoke man's function into him from the realm of the spirit. So man is a spirit being. Many times, the dictates of this world come because man forgets his origin. You and I were created with components of the spirit and functions of the spirit and given a spiritual assignment on a physical world. And so you find God, how do you prove that? Eve talks to Satan and God shows up on the scene. If that was purely natural, God would not have showed up. In the Garden of Eden was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. If Adam's transgression was purely natural, God would not have shown up to judge and make judgments in that place. And therefore you and I need to know that man is predominantly a spirit being. Never forget that. John chapter number one, I love this, and beginning at verse 10. But as many as received him, he gave them the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Glory to God. If you begin from verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him. So you understand, this is the redemption stage of man. It was the, the creation stage, the covenant stage, and then the redemption stage. The creation stage, you know. The covenant stage is the prophets and the law. The redemption stage is the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, it says in verse 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. Now, how is it possible? How is it possible that you and I, having human faculties are predominantly spiritual. The Bible explains very clearly, we have received the right to become the children of God. The realm of the spirit 
is a very fascinating realm. Glory to God. Very fascinating realm. Many people win and many people lose based on their understanding of this realm. The Bible says, I'm giving you just an introduction into that realm. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 21. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Redemption state. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. We've left being the image and likeness of God and having the spirit of God We've received the covenants. We've received the right to become the children of God. And now we are called the righteousness of God. So God's language and God's description of you is ever, in, is ever increasing and is ever evolving. As the scriptures unveil the progression of God's plan, God's description of you is ever evolving. Here the Bible says that ye are the righteousness of God in him. In him. Glory to God. Now, you have also a portion of scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that I love so much. Glory to God. The Bible says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Not only are you created in the image of God, in the likeness of God, have received the breath of God, received the covenants of God, received the right to become the children of God, have become the righteousness of God. The Bible says you are one spirit with him. One spirit with him. And therefore, if you look at what the scriptures are saying, God has called you and I to be spirit beings with spiritual capacity in a natural world. So we realize that, well, before I go on, I don't want to make the scriptures say what I'm not showing you they're saying. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number four. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter number four and verse four says, There is one body, and one spirit, including you. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling, one baptism, one faith, one God, one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Not only does the Bible clarify and you come to the place where it says you're one spirit, now God is saying, there is one body, one spirit, one calling, one Lord, one baptism, one God, one Father above all, through all, in you all. So you have a deposit of God in you. You have a deposit of God in you. According to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, you have a deposit of God in you. Because it says, who is above all and through all and in you all. That means, child of God, that if we were to weigh you as a Christian, you weigh heavier on the spiritual side than on the natural side. And that is why with spiritual knowledge, spiritual wisdom and spiritual power, you can manipulate physical occurrences. 
Miracles can happen. Signs and wonders can happen. Your speech alone can affect that which is physical. Now the Bible tells us something more than that. Glory to God. The Bible tells us something more than that. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible shows us why many suffer even though they have the invitation to become the right, uh, the children of God. 4.17 Ephesians says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. And remember, he's talking to Christians. In the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who having past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness and cleanness with all greedness. Now the Bible says that ye have not so learned Christ. Now listen to this. If indeed you have heard him, have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. So now, not only do you have the right to become a child of God, a one spirit with God, have the deposit of God in you. The Bible says that you have been taught by him, you have heard him, and number three, his truth has been personified in the person of Jesus in you. Now, I'm going to say this because um, what I want to bring out to you is a staggering truth. Amen. Is a staggering truth. When you go about your day every day, you go into the world and do things, I want you to know what you're armed with. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 10. So now we understand that there is a realm of God. But now the Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. That is the realm of the spirit, by the way. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So now we have an introduction of you, an introduction of God, but now we have an introduction of the devil. He says, put on that armor that you may stand against. So there is something against you. You qualified to be an adversary of the devil when you aligned yourself with God. So the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. Then he says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So you're looking at people around. And your issues, your perspective of life, you see, that word wrestle has so many meanings. It's not just having confrontation. In a sense, it also means you do not have your full perspective limited to flesh and blood. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is the first heaven. Then it says, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Many Christians, and I'm going to be very sharp, and I'm going to be very raw with you. Many Christians suffer because they do not know who they are. And they do not know from where they have the advantage. It is not just, I'll give you an example, it is not just the use of the name of Jesus. It is the use of the name of Jesus with the knowledge, the accurate understanding of the realm of the spirit where that name is enthroned. It is not just the use of the blood of Jesus. 
because there are many who use the name and die saying Jesus and they die. But your advantage, my advantage, is in understanding that our supremacy is in the realm of the spirit where God has enthroned us over all principalities and powers. Ephesians chapter 1 explains this. Glory to God. Ephesians 1 explains this. And we'll come to some of these scriptures real quick. The Bible says, And to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power, verse 19, to what us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he raised in Christ, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. The same heavenly places where there is warfare, the Bible says Christ has been raised. The same heavenly places where Paul says there is warfare, the same Paul says Christ has been raised. He's seated at the right hand. And in that place, far above all principality, power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of the things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. When you see the word heavenly places, you're talking about the realm of the spirit. You're born, Jesus said, I am from above. You are from beneath. I hope you remember that he said that. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in John chapter 3 and Jesus tells him, you must be born again. He stresses two things. He says, except, except you're born of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Two, except you're born of the Spirit and water, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, it says, Ye that are living in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. So the question is, where is my advantage? I want to give you four riveting thoughts. Where is my advantage? Why has my life not gone as I anticipated it to go? Or why does so-and-so have a natural, unusual power over me beyond my desire to be held, beyond my desire to participate? Why is it my finances are going this way? My health is going that way. Child of God, I want to bring you to your realization. It is one thing to know what the Bible says. It is another thing for you to know where the advantage is when the Bible says what it says. The Bible says, for example, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter number 8, glory to God. Romans chapter number 8, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So he makes a clear distinction. He says there are those who walk according to the flesh, and then there are those who walk according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. Notice he says the law of the spirit, not the law of understanding. And understanding is good, but understanding is powerful when it is done in the spirit. And therefore, child of God, what is the realm of the spirit? It is that place where you, God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, meet together to exercise your faith and God's sovereignty. That's the realm of the Spirit. From that realm, you are born of the Spirit. From that realm, you are taught of the Spirit. From that realm, you are anointed of the Spirit. From that realm, you are commissioned by the Spirit. From that realm, you're called by the Spirit. From that realm, you pray to God. From that realm, you have dominion by the Spirit. From that realm, your faith is alive by the same Spirit. But not knowing, listen to me, not knowing why it is important is the greatest failure. Why do we pray? 
Why do we fast? Why are we here? To improve our efficiency in that realm where we have supremacy. And sometimes our efficiency is dulled down by the flesh. And our efficiency is dulled down by ignorance. And our efficiency is dulled down by a lack of participation with the word of God. But the moment you understand that my advantage is the realm of the spirit, you begin to dictate, you begin to dedicate, you begin to have a focus that desires to maximize that which is spiritual over that which is logical and visible. I want to go to two portions of scripture to bring out what I am saying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says in John 1, 13, it says, these are they who were born, but not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So who are these? Because we know that everybody is born of the flesh, of the will of man, of blood. So who are these? It is those who have received God by faith, received the sacrifice of Jesus, have become one spirit with him, and have been born into God as spirit beings on earth with a physical body. So now you, you, have, to, you, have, to, you have to change your perspective. The moment you get born again, the Bible says, Oh, paralefte, elke vrange keste, zalifradias. One of, the, one of the most important things that you find in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore, if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. That thing we've talked about, you're not born of blood, you're not born of the flesh, you're not born of the will of man, but of God. What is that? He explains it, a new creation. All things have passed away, all things have become new. Which things? The things that pertain to your likeness with God. The things that pertain to how you function on earth are new. So Christianity is not a religion. It's not a set of rules and doctrines. It is communion with the living Christ. And you and I must know this. Where is my advantage now? You must take the scriptures literally because the realm of the spirit is that detailed. Jesus said, I am from above. You are from beneath. If you think about what he's saying, he was very deliberate about the things of the spirit. Jesus was born of the spirit anointed by the Spirit, did miracles by the Spirit, cast out devils by the Spirit, gave us the kingdom by the Spirit. For in John 20, 21, he says, he breathed upon them and they received the Holy Ghost. He's the one who baptizes with the Spirit and fire. He speaks by the Spirit. So child of God, where is your advantage? And how much investment have you made in the realm of the Spirit? There is a knowledge in this realm I mean, you may have it the way you want, but how do you explain miracles? How do you explain miracle provision? How do you explain it? It's very simple to explain. He has given us ministering spirits. In Zion, the realm of the spirit is an innumerable company of angels. You have banking angels, you have family angels, you have children raising angels. You have marriage angels. You have all sorts of angels. 
It is a highly structured realm. But know your advantage. You see, don't just pray. Understand, understand. Ask God for insight on how to gain supremacy in the realm of the spirit. Many pray, but they don't pray in the spirit. Many fast, but they don't fast in the spirit. Many give, but they don't give in the spirit. Many serve, but they don't serve by the spirit. And therefore, my, my, my appeal to you today is know your advantage. Your advantage as a Christian is the realm of the spirit. Everyone could be saying one thing and God is saying the other thing in the realm of the spirit. So listen to this. God creates man. He gives Adam the ability to hear from God directly. Adam messes that up. God sends prophets to them to introduce to them the supremacy of the realm of the Spirit by the Holy Spirit. Peter says, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The scriptures were not written by man. There is no human intellect in the scriptures. It's the, word, it's the, it's the incarnate word of God. When you go from there, Jesus comes restores God's order of the spirit and makes it that when you believe him, you are born of that spirit and into that kingdom. And now, child of God, you begin to see this world in a different way. How can we be talking, how can we be talking about millions of dollars to invest in the Balkans? I am from Uganda. Glory to God. My wife is from here, but I'll tell you it's as strange to them as it is to me. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not strange. It is not strange. The same God that provided your salvation has provided your finances. The same God that has provided your deliverance has provided your healing. But where is it? In the spirit. In the spirit. Your job is to learn how to work with the Holy Spirit. And therefore the Bible says that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit. My appeal to you today, I came to appeal to you today, know where your advantage is. Your faith can suffer a lot when you do not know where your advantage is. It can look like your prayers are bouncing off the roof. If you don't know where your advantage is, you're not just praying, you're praying in the Spirit. You're not serving, you're serving by the Spirit. You're not just living, you're living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, by the Spirit, and having spiritual results. The reason as to why I say this is because the busyness of life the world is, fast, is so fast-paced today. Technology has made it look like it's a replacement for the spirit. But I want to tell you, you cannot replace the realm of the spirit. No education, no technology, no advancement, no political, no military, nothing can replace your position in the realm of the spirit. Therefore, I speak to you like that that, that voice that John had in the book of Revelation, come up, come up to the throne of God. Come up to the realm of the spirit. Leave that realm where nothing works. The carnal realm, the natural realm. You have no business fashioning your life. I want to tell you some very, some very uh, scary things. Jesus in John chapter 4, told the woman everything about her life. Everything about her life. Jesus told Nathaniel everything about his life. God has something to tell you that nobody can tell you. God has something to say about that failing business. He has something to say about that failing marriage. 
He has something to say about everything concerning your life. But it's in the realm of the spirit. That's where your advantage is. Know that you're an ego. That's the analogy given. Know that you're a lion. You're different from the others. And we don't say it to say it disparagingly. But as soon as you are one with Christ, you're one spirit with him. Your advantage is in the spirit. I pray that God will bring this, this realization. It's of vital importance. Everything about your life is locked there. As a Christian, everything about your life is locked there. Even that which you use against the enemy is in there. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Why are they not carnal? Because they are in that place where we have the advantage and the supremacy in the realm of the spirit. Now make it your business. Make it your business to go through the Bible and understand how it is God won battles. How did Jericho fall? By the spirit. How did God anoint David? By the Spirit. How did God anoint prophets? Elisha, by the Spirit. It's all by the Spirit. It's what made Israel unique. It's what made the apostles unique. It's what makes you unique. And it is what keeps you looking unto Jesus. So know your, know your niche. Know the place of your advantage. Don't wake up complaining. Don't, don't, don't wake up wondering how things are going to work. The realm of the Spirit. You pray in the Spirit. You fast in the Spirit. You understand with the wisdom given by the Spirit, from the Spirit. You work spiritually in a physical world. I'll say it again. You work spiritually in a physical world. You're convinced of that realm more than the things you see. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray that the veil, the Bible says that the God of this age has blinded the eyes. I pray that the veil will be broken. The veil will be lifted off. That you will begin to see as you are seen. You begin to know as you are known. In that realm, there are no limits. And in that realm, all things are yours. And in that realm, there's no such thing as no. And in that realm, all the promises of God are yea and amen. But you have to know your advantage. Know it. Live by it. Live by it. More important to me more important to me than my Christianity is the knowledge of that realm. When crisis presents itself, the deposits and the investment in that realm is what dissolves the crisis. The boldness to speak comes from the understanding and the wisdom from that realm. Jesus himself said, the word, the word that I speak to you is spirit and life. The very scriptures are spirit. I pray that God would give you ascendance. Ascendance into the realm of the spirit. In your dreams, stay in that realm. In your thoughts, you have the mind of Christ. Stay in that realm. And this is why the realm of the spirit is directly connected to the scriptures through your study, your meditation, and your obedience. Your study, your meditation, your obedience. The scriptures have to be first place in your First place. First place. Don't throw the Bible away. Don't read it just for inspiration. Read it because it is the manual of your life as you are a new creation. Everything about you now is new. 
You have to learn it afresh and master it in this world where there is literally a, a game of dominions. The Lord is with you and you will do valiantly. The Lord is with you and you will do valiantly. I say the Lord is with you and you will do valiantly because you're born of that realm. You function by that realm. You command sickness to die and it dies from that realm. You're supplied by that realm. You're kept by that realm. And when we mean, when we say the realm of the spirit, we are talking about being one spirit with Christ Jesus. Understand you are a spirit being. You are a spirit being. You are a spirit being with a fleshly body. And you possess a soul to interpret what you see on the outside. Come up, come up to the throne of God where you are enthroned above everything, above everything. Now, look into these things in the Spirit, of the Spirit, by the Spirit, as you read the Scriptures. And you'll quickly realize, wait a minute. God left a provision for my dominion. He left a provision for me never to fail. He left a provision for me to stand out always. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that your spirit will be awakened to where it was birthed from. Your spirit will be awakened to its oneness with Christ Jesus. That your conscience and your consciousness will draw strength and understanding from your communion with Christ Jesus. And therefore you are a spirit being who God talks to, who God reveals himself to, and the evidence is in the natural. Yes, some call it miracles. We call it the sovereignty of the realm of the spirit. Every, every law of life, every law of physics is subject to that realm. In the name of Jesus, be awakened, ascend. Be awakened, ascend. Be awakened, gain ascendancy, gain ease. To work with the realm of the spirit, to rise above the affairs of life. Child of God, I want to remind you, you're born of God. You're not just born of flesh and blood and the will of man. You're born of God. You can overcome the challenge because the strength is of the spirit. And when I say of the spirit, I mean the strength is of Christ himself. Christ himself. I end with this. If God be for us, who can be against us? You see, it now makes sense. If God be for us, if I am born of God and I'm one with God, where is the devil that can challenge me? It's not yet born. I'm telling you, a tenacity rises up. A faith rises up. You are a child of the king. You're a chosen generation. You are royal priesthood. And you're one with Christ Jesus. Never forget where your advantage is. In this life and in the next. In Jesus' mighty name.
and the people say, Amen and Amen.